Hi everyone, it's good to see you all again here uh, on YouTube as we gather again for another midweek meditation. I just want to thank you uh, for being a part of this wonderful uh, opportunity to share the hope and the excitement that comes from being uh, sons and daughters of the living God and sharing the gospel with one another. Uh, so I just want to thank you again uh, for being a part of this and for once again allowing me into the spaces of your lives uh, so that I can just share a little bit of the hope of God, uh, especially in these days when we see there's so much going on and we need a little bit of that hope and encouragement. So I'm hoping today uh, to be an encouragement to you. And today uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk uh, a little more about the, the function of the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does for us uh, as, as a church and as the family of God, how the Holy Spirit is there to empower us uh, and to be that spark, that flame, that fire that's lit within us uh, to be living witnesses uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but today we're just going to talk a little bit about when the Holy Spirit came first to the church uh, on a day we call Pentecost, on a day when the Spirit uh, came after Jesus had gone up uh, into heaven. Jesus promised throughout his ministry, uh, you see this especially in the Gospel of John, uh, where Jesus promised over and over that another one would come, a helper, uh, a comforter, uh, someone who would come and bring power unto them. And so this is what happens uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, in starting uh, at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And a little bit later, uh, in verse 17, Peter, who's talking to uh, a great crowd of people who had gathered around to see what was happening, this wonderful event, uh, he calls out from the prophet Joel uh, about the coming of the Holy Spirit and what that would mean for humankind. And he it starts in verse 17. It says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, today we just thank you for the opportunity to gather around together, uh, to just uh, be in your word, and to hear from you as you speak into our lives, as you uh, help us to stretch and grow as your disciples, as your followers, so that in everything that we do in our lives, uh, everything that we say and every action that we take would be something that would please you, uh, would be something that advances uh, your purpose in this world. Uh, and is a way to share with others the goodness of your gospel and your grace. We just thank you, and we ask that you would bless us in this time. In the name of Jesus, amen. So today, as we're looking at this uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, here we have the disciples. They're uh, in the upper room, and they're feeling a little bit afraid. Uh, Jesus has gone up to heaven, and now they're sort of wondering what comes next. And what comes next is this amazing and fantastic miracle that happens uh, where they're all gathered together in a room when all of a sudden they see what looks like fire uh, coming down out of, out of heaven, coming down out of the sky above. I mean, they, they're, they're probably looking up at the roof and they're, what they're seeing is the heavens opened up and God's just giving them this vision uh, of fire coming down upon them and filling them. And as soon as, as this happens, and, and, and what looks like the fire descends upon them, suddenly now they're all talking in different languages. Some are talking in languages they understand. Some of them are talking in languages they've never heard before. Some of them are talking in languages that have never been heard before. Uh, but what happens is at this moment, they go out into the streets and they begin to, to talk about Jesus openly and without fear. See, the, the Spirit filled them with courage. And so not only did the Spirit give them a message, he also gave them the courage to go out and share it. 
So here the disciples are, Peter's out there and he's, you know, he's, he's up on the tallest uh, thing he can get on and he's talking about Jesus and he's sharing the gospel with the people here in Jerusalem. And, you know, some of the folks who are gathered around here think, ah, he's probably just had a little, uh, a little too much to drink last night and he hasn't slept it off yet. But Peter goes in, in uh, on those naysayers into the prophecies of the Old Testament and pulls out that in the days uh, after Jesus, in the days of the Messiah, there would come a time when this kind of thing would be happening, when God would pour out his power upon all people, upon all those people who call upon his name, uh, and all those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so this is our first encounter with the Holy Spirit in the church. And so uh, a couple of the things that we learn from this encounter with the church and the Holy Spirit is that first, one of the one of the wonderful things that we receive as a result of the Spirit dwelling with, within us, and, and what we say, when we say that, what we say is that when we're saved, when we come and we repent, we give our lives to Christ, and we say that God comes into our hearts, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit that comes into our hearts, that makes its dwelling within us, within our spirit, which then uh, puts upon us the seal of salvation, which says that we're saved, that we are sons and daughters of the living God. But also, that spirit fills us with great power. It fills us with the power of heaven. It fills us with the power that God has ordained to come to each and every one of us who have the Holy Spirit within us. So uh, if you don't yet know uh, that you have the Holy Spirit within you, you're a follower of Jesus and nobody's told you that the Holy Spirit was, is within you and that there is great power within you, let me be the first to say congratulations uh, that as a follower of Jesus, you have the power of heaven at work within your spirit, not just to assure uh, your salvation, but to equip you to be a follower of Jesus in these days. So here, you know, the Holy Spirit gives uh, these early disciples the gift of being able to speak to every single person that they meet and be understood and have the gospel understood in the languages uh, of all the people who are gathered here. It's like the reverse Tower of Babel, you know, where uh, in the great work that mankind was trying to do to reach God, uh, God uh, confused the languages that the people were speaking. And so they end up speaking all these different languages. They're confused. Well, here we are. Uh, at Pentecost, it's sort of the reverse. What God does is he makes it so that those who are doing the great work of sharing the gospel are now speaking in languages that everybody can understand. So here we are uh, in this great place where, um, you know, God is hard at work and uh, we're, we're seeing God do this wonderful and amazing thing among the people. And so what we have here is uh, Jesus sending the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fills up these disciples, and the disciples have this power now where they're speaking in uh, different languages, but also they're filled with this courage. You know, before they, I mean, minutes before, they were sitting in the, the, the upper room, fearful that the Romans were going to break in and haul them off to jail, fearful that the, the mob and the crowd that condemned Jesus were going to come down hard on them too, concerned and afraid that uh, their families and their lives would be at risk because of their faith in Jesus, not knowing what to do. But the Holy Spirit comes in and the Holy Spirit gives courage. The Holy Spirit gives peace. The Holy Spirit gives everything that these disciples need in order to get up and get out there and share the gospel of Jesus. And that's the wonderful power of the Holy Spirit, is that the power of the Holy Spirit uh, equips us to share Jesus, not just in the words, uh, not just in the, the things that we say, but also in the way uh, that we live and also in the way that we present ourselves. That these people were bravely and courageously just stepping out there to share the gospel of Jesus. So today, my encouragement, the hope that I want to share with you today is that if you are a follower of Jesus, you are filled with that same power. You are given that same opportunity. You are, you are surrounded by that same presence as these disciples in this day when they were filled for the first time, when they were able to get out there and represent Jesus in the best way. And you have that power too. You have that opportunity too today to represent Jesus in the best way 
because of how he has filled you with the Holy Spirit. And so today I just want to encourage you and give you that hope that you are not a powerless person. You are not a person uh, who, who, who can do nothing. You are a person who can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, who fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to follow you, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, to be your disciples and to live out our lives courageously for you. I ask, O oh God, in this time that you would bless each and every person in the sound of my voice, that they would know that they are not weak, but they are strong, that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, and that they are ready to take on this world and share the hope and the, and the joy of the Lord, no matter where they are and whatever circumstance they're in. Bless each and every person who is here today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again. Uh, for tuning in to this message of hope. And as we go through the weeks, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit more about the power of the Holy Spirit and the kinds of ways that the Spirit empowers us to be a church in this day and age that shares the hope of God with all people. God bless you, and I'll see you real soon.